Hello and welcome to Let's Play Survive Brave New World as Morocco. Continuing our um, series of uh, games based on trying to exploit all the various unique tile improvements. I'm here this time with Blastinus. Hello there. Hi. And uh, Blast is kind of familiar with Civ Five and kind of not. I I never really got really past fifteen minutes playing Civ Five because, for whatever reason, it crashed on my laptop. Yeah. So that kind of burned me out on it pretty quickly. Yeah. So we're playing here as Morocco, who are probably um, one of the weakest civilizations in the game, generally considered to be one of the weakest. Says their bonuses are. It's not like their bonuses are like bad bonuses or useless bonuses it's just that they're not particularly huge either and all added up together compared to some of the really powerful things other civilizations get morocco ends up just sort of losing out a bit well so, i mean it, se it seems like you could win potentially with a, with a culture victory with, with their gateway to africa skill no you can't because you you aren't getting that many trade routes Oh, okay. See, that's only... Okay, so your, your gateway to Africa ability, plus three gold and plus one culture for each trade route with a different civilization. So that means each different nation you trade with gives you plus three gold and plus one culture. And how many civilizations are usually in the game? Well, we are playing on a large map, and so there's ten, including us. That's not a lot, really. Yeah. Now, also, city-states, there are city-states on the map as well. But, yeah. So, you, you see why, again, it's generally often not, it's generally not considered to be all that powerful. It's a nice little boost very early on in the game, but it's, you, yeah, you see why everyone says it's not that powerful. No, oh, I and see, you, yeah. you have to be trading with, that's with each unique person you're trading with. All right, uh... Yeah. And you then, want to explain what the Berber Cavalry and the Kasbah do? Yeah, you have the Berber Cavalry, which is your cavalry replacement. You get um, extra bonuses in desert and in friendly territory. And then you have your Kasbah, which is the neat improvement, which we will be showing off a lot of. You can only build it on deserts. Uh, plus one food, plus one hammer, plus one gold. Uh, now, the thing is, the Kasbah, it's a decent all-round improvement, but compared to some of the the um it's a trade-off casbahs don't have particularly powerful yields and it's a trade-off so if you have a lot of flood planes you may want to be doing them farms instead for the extra food that you would get compared mm -hmm. to building a casbah casbah will only give you one food a farm uh on a flood plane after civil service will give you plus two food yeah that that seems like it it could make the difference in a lot of case, cases. It really does. So we're going to get started here into the game. Now we are playing on the Mediterranean map. And given that that is the edge of the map right there, I think we have started out in, uh, out in Egypt or um, maybe Arabia, depending on how... I'm not exactly sure or how far uh, east the map goes and I'm going that to take a turn to just scout a little with our settler I would it seem like if we are in Egypt that's like, like, pretty much in the opposite end of Africa from where Morocco actually is well not the opposite end of Africa the, the opposite end of Africa would be the Zululand in South Africa well I mean opposite um from east to west. Yes. Now, let's see. I'm trying to think now. Now, last you you know um, uh, how city settling works in Civ Five. Because um, I know you haven't been watching the LP, so. Yeah. Uh, could you give basically the Cliff Notes explanation? Yeah. Okay. So when you settle a city in Civ Five, your city takes up one tile on the map, and it can work up to three tiles out from around it. Okay. So, um, now, you also 
that's the, the work the like direct yields that your city can get is from the three towns around it your borders can expand to a maximum of five although it will rarely do that unless you're going very heavily for culture and if you want to have uh, access to the sea if you want to build a harbour and all these things and boats in the city it has to be directly adjacent to the ocean mm-hmm um, and so now I, I, now I find myself torn here between, you can see here that there is a coast tile heater, so mm -hmm. you have water access here. I'm now torn between settling on the water or settling closer here so we can get the the wine in our working range. Hmm. So if we're in Egypt, what body of water do you think that might be? I if, I don't think we're in Egypt. I think we are at the north of the Arabian Peninsula. Okay. So this would this would be the Red Sea, and the, the Sinai Peninsula would be right here. I mean, it's as good a place as any to settle. Well, actually, if that w is indeed the Red Sea, that means we're not going to have... Uh, coastal access to the rest of the map unless it turns out that on this map we can settle a canal city at the Suez. So you can't build canals there? in this game. You can build canals? You cannot. Oh. The only way to build a canal is to settle a city on a one tile wide strip of land. And uh do we not have anything available for that? No. Well, you see, we don't. I'm not. I don't know this map well enough to know if we can do that. Uh, I, to guarantee that. Now, the thing is, the thing is with uh, sea access. Sea access means you can have coastal trade routes, and trade routes by a boat are considerably more valuable than trade routes by a caravan. They're a lot harder to defend. But they go further and they make you a lot more money. Okay. And you can also hmm. get a lot more food. So I'm now... Also, of course, if we do settle down here, we can't really get any of our unique improvements in our capital either. But... Hmm. Well, I mean, where is the closest desert in terms of your settlers here? Right here. Okay, so up near the mountains... Well, We're those are hills. Those are not actually. Those are not mountain tiles. Those are hill tiles. Oh. Okay. Mountains are impassable. So I'm. I'm. You know. I'm going to take an extra turn and just have the. Okay. Scout, or the settler scout that. Now you can. There is a sheep source of sheep there. There is no sea resources anywhere around. Um. So that is disincentivizing me towards settling on the coast. Well, I wouldn't... Okay, now there's... Right. Now, just... I want to... Well, I should point out here, this is the game settings. We're in Morocco. This is the Mediterranean map. It's large. The Mediterranean map is fixed at being large-sized. We're on immortal difficulty and standard game speed. Is Immortal um, sort of the harder hard mode? Immortal is the second hardest difficulty. Oh. The only one higher is Deity, and I, while I can play on Deity, I generally dislike doing so because um, the AI gets so many uh, bonuses, extreme bonuses on Deity, that your play style has to become extremely inflexible in order to overcome it. And I feel for the purposes of the LP, it uh, wouldn't necessarily be as... Um, also, on uh, Immortal, I am reasonably certain of my chances of winning. Which is ironic, considering I've lost twice in four games. Four and a half <laughs> games, I should say. or this, Well, this is the fourth game, and then three and a half games. For the LP yep. so far, I lost one, and then in the third game, I lost once and then rolled back the save and went on to win. So, what is the policy on doing base safety saves? Are you do you save I, every now and then? And, I and I, then I save at the end of every episode. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> also, I have auto saves going every turn. So if things go but completely the, the, south, the, the then... auto the auto saves are all are capped out at one hundred. So it'll only auto save the one hundred most recent turns. Hmm. Now, anyway, since I'm not seeing any resources here on the coast, there's no there's no like fish or anything here. And knowing that this is the Red Sea, unlikely to block us off from the rest of the map. Uh, what I'm, I'm seeing these resources here, I think what I'm going to do is, now if you remember, three tiles out from your city. Mm -hmm. I think what I'll do, I'll move the settler here to this tile. Oh, to get the gems? Which will get, no, here, next to the gems, which will get us, it means that our capital, which is uh, Marrakesh, will be able to work the, both wheat, both wine, the gems, both ivory and the sheep. Ah, uh, so so you're not actually getting elephants; you're just harvesting their tusks. Yeah, it's ivory. Oh come on! Like it, it's uh, it's it's Africa. Why don't we get some war ele war elephants? Uh, war elephants are unique units for specific civilizations. There Carthage, are three right? civilizations in the game that have access to elephant units. Uh, Carthage has the unique their African forest elephant which replaces the horseman uh, India has the war elephant which replaces the chariot archer and uh, Siam has the Naraswan's elephant which replaces the knight I see so no taming elephants for us no so here we go this is our capital of Marrakesh which is the historic capital of Morocco now we'll build a sky um hi and we'll go for pottery because this this is a very food poor start. If you notice here, this is all plains tiles. Plains do not have good food yields. We only have two high food tiles: the wheat, the two wheat, neither of which are next to a source of fresh water. So it's all plains with no fresh water around here. Marrakesh is going to have uh, food trouble. It's going I mean, to be difficult to make Marrakesh a large city. Well, if all we're going to do is harvest the ivory, why don't we eat some elephants? Yeah, elephants do not have good food yield, you see? Wait, I was I was joking. We actually can eat elephants? No, I'm just saying the, the tile does not have a good food yield. The meat? Oh, okay. So Marrakesh is going to need a lot of support, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, we discovered mining. Why don't we start harvesting some gems? You know, we, if we want to hook up the gems, we need a worker for that. Oh, okay. We need we need a civilian unit to improve it. Explore the ruin. And we have scout here. And now, I think I will go double scout in this. This is a large map. So I, I'm going to go double scout. I think in this case we're definitely going for the this the there's four social policies trees mm -hmm. available at the start of the game in the ancient era. Uh, we will be going for tradition. This is something we have discussed in the past about the LP. In this case, the lack of food in Marrakesh. Yes, we definitely want to go for tradition. Mm -hmm. um, religion wise, I read up apparently Morocco's official religion is uh, Sunni Islam. Well, there's only, there's only, they don't uh, differentiate in Civ 5, there's only Islam. I see. And you don't, you, you get to pick whatever you want. If you're creating religion in Civ 5 works, uh, you create your own. Each game. Yes, so I was right, we are, yes, this is the, this is the Arabian Peninsula. Looking actually very fertile for the Arabian Peninsula. Hmm. You notice this here, this would be, um, what that would be, I think, because I think we're too far north for, because uh, Mecca and Medina would be down here, I think, so I'm not sure which city this would be, but you can see here, you'll notice it's very, um, 
The Arabian Peninsula are not exactly known for its plains. So it's a uh, map. Is, the map is a bit more fertile than would be in real life. And yes, this here is obviously the. So this is the Sinai Peninsula here. Well, I mean, even if it's not historically accurate, it's, it's good for us, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm just saying it's interesting to note how they've changed the map. I think presumably for the sake of making the map more balanced to actually play on. Also, it it I noted that it said that we founded ourselves a pantheon. We have not. We did not. No, we. What have was not. that? What, what was that note about? Um. I'm not sure. I, I miss that. I'm so used to just sort of uh, playing quickly at everything. I, uh, we ha we do not have a pantheon. Though. Hmm. If we want to find a pantheon, we need to get uh, to 15 faith, and that's only if we're the first person to get to 15 faith. Uh, picking a pantheon. Pantheon is when you when you're creating religions, you start with a pantheon. Pantheons are drawn from a pool. It's first come, first serve, and the cost goes up each time somebody draws from the, the pool. So, the first to, the first person to get in only needs to pay 15, the second person needs to pay uh, 30, and so forth. Right. Does does founding a, a religion improve your culture? It can do, it depends what you pick. You pick you take you pick bonuses when you create a religion. You pick what bonuses that religion is going to give. So you can pick culture bonuses if there's any still available. Because again, it's drawn from a first it's uh, drawn from a pool on a first come first serve basis. Mm -hmm. How much interaction does the game actually give you between other civilizations you know, before you actually discover them for real? Before before we meet them, uh, none. We have no contact with anybody until we meet them. So how would you know if someone founded a religion before you? You will get a global notification. Okay. We won't know who, but you can deduce it based on which religions they pick. Like, a rough idea, because they will always... The first person to pick will always pick their favourite. And so, for example, if somebody picks Zoroastrianism... You know that it's going to, uh, you know it's going to be Persia. Okay, so Greek civilization would obviously pick the. Um, Greek, the Greeks will pick Eastern Orthodoxy if they have the choice. If Eastern Orthodoxy is still available, Greece will always pick that first before any others. That's interesting. Yeah. So you you have to be careful. So for instance, if somebody picks Tangriism, you know it's either Attila the Hun or Genghis Khan. Either of those sounds like bad news. Mm. Right. No. Uh, I'm trying to. Th I'm thinking here about Tech Path. And I think what we might try to do is you see now we have jet. No, we need um, ivory requires trapping. Uh, gems we already have mining uh, wine requires calendar but I think what we might try to do because Marrakesh is so food poor we might try to get some of the early food based uh, wonders available and so for example here the temple of Artemis which gives you extra growth that doesn't actually give us overall food but it will let us get to our sort of maximum level for the food we have a lot faster the temple of Artemis in it's, Africa? Well, uh, it doesn't matter. It's historically you build whatever you want as you want. Okay. So I know it's ahistorical for Morocco to be building the temple to Artemis, but that doesn't matter. It's the same as like uh, Washington, George Washington can still build Big Ben. And uh, Oda Nobunaga can build the Eiffel Tower. That's just how Civ works. Basically, don't think about it too hard. Yeah. Okay, so that wasn't very useful because the map 
we got from those ruins, we got a map, and we had already unveiled all the tiles that the map knew about, so it didn't give us much of a bonus. Well, I mean, we did see that there's something um, across across the sea. No, no, we haven't. Really? There we go. Um, That's ninety-five gold. There's Lake Galilee. Hmm. So we might be uh, crossing up into Judea. We are in Judea now. This this scout here is out in Judea. This is this is this area here. That's Lake Galilee right there. Okay. So yeah, we we've started in Saudi Arabia. All right, and what was that social policy you just picked there? Oh right, sorry, I forgot. You're not familiar with her. You're, yes, we picked uh, aristocracy plus fifteen percent. Uh, production when building wonders and plus one happiness for every ten population in the city. Well, I mean, that is appropriate. Um, Morocco is a constitutional monarchy. They have a a king and a parliament. Yeah. Well, modern Morocco does. Yeah, this is, this is uh, represents sort of Morocco throughout its history, not just modern Morocco. Ah, I see you've annexed the elephants at this point. No, our borders are... Well, I suppose you call it. Our borders have expanded there. Now, what we absolutely need here now is the granary. See, it's super important here. Uh, sometimes you can delay... The, it's super important everywhere, every time you build a city, you need a granary going. But sometimes, depending on like how the early game is going, you can delay it a bit. Here... We cannot afford to be delaying it even slightly. Mm. And so no like you said. It, it gives you plus two food and then extra food from every source of wheat. Hmm. You know looking at all this wheat that we got here, seems like it seems like we could you know, establish a city over here. No it uh -huh. See no that would be perhaps a wee bit of a trap now. You can make a very productive city out of this, but if you notice here, it's deer, wheat, sheep, there's no luxury resources. I see, so... so they luxury be... resources are your primary method of getting happiness in Civ 5. And happiness across your empire is global. So if we sell the city here, each time you grow in population, you sell the city, you grow in the population, you're not getting... You've got no happiness from luxury resources. So we would need to find an awful lot of extra happiness from other places in order to build a city there and not start taking huge penalties. I getcha. So even if it'd be, if it'd be prosperous, they, they still would want something something like the gems over here. Yeah, well now, you, each unique luxury resource you have Gives your empire plus four happiness. Hmm. So if you have extra luxuries, they don't do anything for you. I see. So what and you do is, if you have more than one, as here we have our two sources of ivory, or our two sources of wine, we'll do is we'll keep one for ourselves and then sell off the second. And I'm guessing, of course, the luxuries are, are region-specific, so... They are some... not necessarily region-specific, but they are clustered on the map. Oh, look at that. Look, was that uh, silk there? Yes, that's silk. And, uh... So what I, what I will be doing is, I think, actually, if you look here... If you think about the luxury resources, so furs are a luxury resource. Mm hmm. Whales are a luxury resource. Gold is a luxury resource. So, where we're going to put our second city will probably be at one of these three spots in order to get the extra luxury, in order to uh, cover the happiness cost of settling a new city. Now, up here, you can see here. Are you that is citrus. So, uh, there's also silver here. So, sitting out here could be a good idea. 
But set like right there next to Lake Galilee, maybe not so much. You need a lot of extra happiness available. And getting that can prove extremely difficult. Hmm. No, so. This uh, archer is very near death, so he's going to sit there and try and heal up for a while. Uh, here's our first neighbor. Ah, Catherine the Great of Russia. Yeah, that seems appropriate. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we, uh, we can see here she has discovered writing and we have not because we can ask uh, sh or she can set up an embassy in our capital. We cannot set up an embassy in hers. And uh, the technology for setting up embassies is... Uh -huh. uh, writing and you can see here her scout has come from over here so we can guess that she's probably down here in Africa somewhere and here of course the Nile uh, very interestingly uh, branching way out into the Sinai Peninsula like that or towards the Sinai like that. Uh, you can see here uh, on this map this map is high density enough that you cannot just the strip here between uh, at Suez, between the Sinai Peninsula, between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea, is wide enough that it's three tiles, so you can't build a canal city. So there's no way for us mm. to get boats from over here in the Red Sea into the Mediterranean in this game. I'm kind of surprised that the Nile doesn't have more food next to it. The That is grasslands. See that? That's grasslands. That's very productive. Uh, food land. I see. So tiles just produce food naturally. Yes, tiles have a base yield, and um, because you're next to a river, that's a source of fresh water. So you can build farms next to that, and then after discovering civil service, any farm next to a source of fresh water gains an extra plus one food. If you build a city next to a river, for example, here you can also build another building, the water mill, that gives you extra food. Everything. So settling on rivers is actually like the best thing for getting a lot of food and growing your city quite tall. Naturally, of course. This is you, so. This is why I was saying you can now see here why I was saying Marrakesh is so food poor. Как тебе понравится? Now Catherine is offering to pay us one gold per turn for thirty turns to set up an embassy. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to take that deal right now. I'm going to wait until we have writing and then just set, uh, set up a reciprocal deal for embassy for embassy. This is the second policy in the tradition tree. That's oligarchy. That is, um, if you have, if you station a unit inside your city, you don't have to pay the gold per turn cost for keeping the unit and your city gains extra combat strength. Oh, yes, that up there, that is incense. That is another luxury resource. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah. Seems like we get quite a variety around here. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing the warrior back to Marrakesh because I want to keep him around. Because barbarians can spawn anywhere that uh, a civilization does not have a direct line of sight. So you see here the like the great out tiles. Barbarians can spot. Uh, uh, there's like a one tile border here, one or two tiles next to the highlighted area or the visible areas, where they can't spawn. But anywhere like in here, barbarians can be spawning. I see. So, so down can... here, once we have civilian units around to hook up our luxuries and our weight and everything, uh, they can't defend themselves. And so we want to have uh, a military unit around to defend them. Now I'm going to try and build the Temple of Artemis here. Now normally what you would do in this situation is you would build a worker uh, very early on to hook up all your resources. I'm, I'm doing things a bit uh, strangely this game. 
and I, I probably shouldn't be. It's a bit of a non orthodox strategy, but I'm uh, taking a gamble for the sake of the LP to see if it pays off. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to spend... You can spend money to buy instantly and just acquire an extra tile for your city. As long as it's in your city's working range and next to your borders. So I can pay 50 gold here for this extra wheat. That um, seems like a, like, a bit of a, like a bit of a gamble this early on. Uh, spending money for tiles like that, not really a gamble. It's not a gamble. Spend money for tiles like that. I know exactly what I'm getting out of it. And you see here, that's three food. Uh, because the, the base yield of that, uh, a wheat on planes, two food, one hammer. Because we built the granary, it's three food, one hammer. Once we build the farm on them, that will be four food, one hammer. Uh, five food after the discovery of fertilizer. And you have, you have to discover fertilizer? Yeah, fertilizer is a technology way... Like, it's, it's like... Poop. No, it's talking about, like, modern chemical fertilizers. Oh, okay. So that's way uh, that's way on in the industrial era. And so that'll be a long time. And that's part of, like, the incentives for settling next to um, rivers and lakes and things. You get you can get extra food for like settling at, at civil service over here in the medieval era, very like very early on. You can get like extra food for your city if you settle next to water. But if you don't settle next to water you want extra food for your farms, you have to wait to fertilizer. I see, so So yeah, now each point of population in your cities takes, requires two food to keep itself going. See so your Marrakesh is size three, it is eating up six food per turn currently. Then and how it, many food are we getting right now? Yeah, any excess we have is then banked and we're currently getting seven food per turn. Uh, okay, or, so we got a surplus of one. Yeah, but then we also have extra for our buildings. Okay, so... So you can see, your, like, even, like, your city, the base yield of the city, your basic tile you're always working as, gives us two. Uh, yeah, see, you're having the palace there. You, you see the city, you're always getting two food. Your city will always provide enough food to have one population point. So, you base yield plus two, plus three, then you have nine food from terrain, mm -hmm. plus two from buildings. And that's the granary. The granary gives you plus two. So we're getting plus five food, uh, food per turn extra. That five, every turn, is put into the bank. This, uh, this bar here. The bank fills up. You grow to size four. Oh, I get it. You so you have, to have a, you have to have an excess of food in order to grow in population? Yeah. Exactly. So what I did was I bought the wheat tile there in order to massively increase Marrakesh's growth in order to try and grow it nice and big as fast as possible in order to have more tiles that it's working that are also contributing hammers and the hammers are what we're using to build the wonder. And hmm. so you can see here it will take us 20 turns to build the Temple of Artemis but since we're growing a lot faster we'll hit size 4 in 7 turns when we hit size four, we'll have an extra uh, tile that we're working, giving us extra hammers towards building the wonder. So actually that 20 turn estimate might turn out to be a lot less? Yes, yeah, I suspect it would probably turn out to be about 14. That's a pretty significant drop. It is, yes. Ah, you can see here some of somebody's borders right here. Maybe it's Russia. Uh, I don't think so. No, looking at it, I think what that is, is I think that's Casimir of Poland. Did you just say Poland? Yes, Poland. Uh, we so we've met Elizabeth of England? You. In Africa. Go ahead. Again, this doesn't matter. And again, this, <laughs> also this is the Mediterranean map. You can see here... There's English borders right there. 
So she is in eastern Turkey. Well, I mean, eastern Turkey, at least that means that we're getting closer to, to Europe. I mean, it's... It's technically not not as not as weird as uh, seeing Russia and Africa. I was right. That you were. Uh -huh. And with that, we're going down there. 